So, so in the second chapter, initially there is more of a conversational a tone, and then eventually it becomes more of a philosophical discussion, philosophical reflections. So right now we are in the first ten verses, which are more conversational. And when Krishna says, "You are being cowardly to Arjuna," Arjuna responds with uh, indignation. Is Arjuna vacha katham bhishma maham sankhe dronam chamadusudana ishu bhi pratiyotsyami pujarha varisudana. So when Krishna speaks to Arjuna and says, you are being cowardly, so there are generally, we can say there can be aggressive reaction, but aggressive reaction can, uh, can range over a wide variety of uh, uh, flavors, you could say. You know, like what one extreme could be just throw a tantrum. Generally, when somebody throws a tantrum, means they are making a small thing into a big thing. Just uh, they are getting angry about something which is really not worth getting angry about. But the the other extreme could be indignation. Now, in between, you could have rage. You could have uh, many other emotions like that. But the key difference I am trying to make out over here is indignation is it is more like anger at wrongdoing. When something wrong has happened, then when we feel we have been wronged and in one sense we feel that that anger is justified, that's when we become angry. And that, ang that, that anger is more indignant. So here, the indignation is Arjuna, Krishna and Arjuna, they are having a discussion. And in one sense, Krishna is ascribing a lower motivation to his action. And he's saying, this is, this is cowardly. And Krishna, Arjuna is responding. It's almost like the two of them are talking past each other. Arjuna is claiming there's a higher motivation. The higher, it's not cowardice at all. It's, you could say, it's consideration, it's compassion, it's, um, it's thoughtfulness, it's caution, it's carefulness, whatever it is. And he's saying that this is not a situation of ordinary cowardice at all. Why? Because these are my, this is my guru and this is my grandsire. So he tells, to make this point, Arjuna turns the table around and he says, would you be nonchalantly fighting against your, your grandfather and your teacher? Would you, be, would you find that easy? So he says, these are people whom I should be offering flowers. Like in our tradition, our culture also, a special guest comes up, so we may give them a bouquet of flowers. So flowers are a sign of respect. So it's basically, I should be respecting them. But instead, if instead of offering flowers, this is what I should be doing. Instead of them, I'm shooting arrows at them. And that is, it, it is not just disrespectful. You could say it is outrageous. It's atrocious. Mm -hmm. So how can I be doing this? So he's saying that there is there is a issue of ethics over here. So it's almost like the Gita is going deeper and deeper. There is an emotional dilemma. Oh, I just don't I just don't feel like doing it. Hmm? My heart is not in this. But Krishna is Arjuna is saying that it's not just an emotional dilemma, it's an ethical dilemma. So Emotional dilemma is that it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right to me. I'm using good and right interchangeably. They're not interchangeable, but it, it's more of feeling. It doesn't feel or good right or right to me. 
but ethical dilemma is i don't i don't think this is good or right and he's telling how is not good or right and it's involve shooting those whom i should be worshiping how can it be right so this point of a ethical dilemma is what will be emphasized by arjun in his subsequent verses also but he is again using a rhetorical question rhetorical statement making a question how can i fight against my teacher and grandfather uh, whom i should be worshiping so definitely arjuna was emotional but it is not just a issue of emotions he says below the emotions there is a serious con ethical consideration also and if if it's just oh you are feeling afraid come on give up that fear and fight it's not that i'm feeling afraid or rather if i'm feeling afraid it is not it is not cowardice it is afraid of i'm afraid whether i'm doing the right thing or not so if at all there is fear there can be fear of death but there can also be fear of wrong doing that i may die that means fear i may die or fear is that what i'm doing is wrong so he's telling that is the fear then my mind right now and i can't i i it's not this it's this and then mm. therefore he will say later i want to know what is the right thing that's what he will say a couple of verses later so he is emphasizing the ethical dimensions of the issue over here gurun ahatva hi maha anubhavan shreyo bhoktum bhiksham api haloke atvartha kamams guru nihaiva bhunjiya bhogan rudhir pratigdhan here arjuna is take, taking his case further saying that okay he said that these are these are venerable beings for me venerable elders for me i shouldn't be fighting against them but even if somebody says oh you know that they have become materially minded they have become money minded that because the other side paid them that's why they are fighting for them they have become like that but he says okay that may be true but that's not the important fact they are still venerable elders that is the more important fact and therefore killing them means that what i get will be tainted by their blood and i don't i don't want this he says better that i abandon my claim to a kingdom and i just uh, what would be the alternative for him in the past societies were quite uh, you could say structured or stratified so it's not that everybody had every single option open for them even if we consider the the society in europe uh, and especially uk for example at the time when uh, it was colonizing india or colonizing america for that matter so even so there is the period of regency or the victorian period gregorian period basically the colonial society colonial uk there those who were the nobility those who were the dukes and the viscounts and the all those posts the, the nobility they were mostly landed gentry that they they had landed uh, property that they would earn from the land the he would be produced over there the farm and everything that's what they would use or they would rent their property working like having a profession was considered unacceptable for them this is just not what you do that you work with your hands so that's not what befits you so the point i am making over here is the past society was very structured and for a warrior the options in that sense were limited either the warrior acts as a protector that means the warrior is ready to fight but if the warrior finds fighting too difficult and the only other career option for the warrior is to renounce the world and become a beggar 
this is now it's more of a renunciant renunciate a person who renounces the world the technical word for them is the more polite word for them is more refined word is mendicant these are holy beggars they're not beggars who oh, they are beggars because they're too lazy to work or they can't get a job it's just because they feel that there is more to life than simply earning a living but in those situations arjuna is no arjuna acknowledges that i can't fight and if i can't fight then the only option left for me is that i'll have to become a beggar and he says even that for a person who has lived in royalty who has lived in prosperity who has lived with great honor for that person to be beggar, beggar would be very painful and humiliating but still says even that is better than trying to then living at the cost of the living on a kingdom that is got at the cost of the blood of my elders so he's saying this option is not working so this is what i will even this is preferable that's what he's saying in this verse i think now he is making all these arguments but he is he now expresses his dilemma dilemma over here nor do we know which is better it's, it's almost like he has aggressively advocated one position and almost at this point he's stepping back from his own position so arjuna's conflict is being revealed over here arjuna is conflicted deeply he understands that this is suddenly if you see he's using the plural over here like the he's not a singular reference for himself i he's using we because on one side he is saying that it's better to be a beggar that's what he just said in the previous verse but then he recognizes that maybe he would prefer that but would is that is that what he would want his entire family to be is he has his oh, he has his brothers he has his wife he has his children is that really good for them so better it is not fighting would mean he would be a beggar that's what he said in the previous verse but now he's saying that uh now so that that was the previous verse basically now if you consider it from this verse's perspective arjuna is talking about uh in this text this is 2.7 he says so that that, that was 2.5 this is 2.6 so he's saying i don't know fighting or not fighting i don't know which is really good i don't know what is to be done and he says now he's not exactly saying fighting over here he's saying conquering them or not conquering or being conquered by them so that means that if he fights he can win it's also possible that he can lose so now being conquered can happen in two ways one is that he fights and loses or he just doesn't he doesn't fight at all both ways he will be conquered but the idea is that not being conquered or not or being conquered that's terrible and he will lose everything as i said he will have to live as a beggar but while this is terrible conquering is in its way also also terrible so he just feeling that i just don't know what to do so this this verse especially depicts you know arjuna is facing what in today's management parlance would call is arjuna dilemma is a lose lose situation if i fight i lose if i don't fight i lose so shakespeare phrased it i think in hamlet to do or not to do that if i do i get caught in a lot of complexities and that's terrible but if i don't do it i had to live with myself and i could have done something to change things and i did not so it's a it's a way where he sees it's a situation where he sees no way ahead and that's why he is 
while this is indicating actually a significant difference in arjuna's uh, uh, arjuna's uh, thinking so in one sense arjuna has these two options but i'm not necessarily saying fighting is superior I'm just depicting so till now he was advocating about not fighting but then why is it that suddenly he says i don't know whether but this is better or not better this is this is this is the uh, because you know in one sense the reasons for fighting they are they, they are evident although he has not they not articulated now but it's not that this is the first as they said this is not arjuna's first rodeo it's not his first fight and it's not that the pandavas have not deliberated the ethics of the fight before in fact uh, before this war when they were deciding forming allies and everything the pandavas tried in multiple ways to settle peacefully but so it's evident even if it's not articulated now and his idea of not fighting that is been articulated now but all the reasons for fighting are also coming in his mind and he's just deeply conflicted at this point i just don't know what is better it sometimes uh, when the whole whole situation is going in a particular direction and we decide it's flowing in a particular direction we decide to go in the other direction we think of going in the other direction we need to articulate the reasons for going against the flow if the flow is in this direction then if i want to go here instead of in the flow's direction then i articulate the reasons why i'll go there but then at the end of the day i also know the reasons why the flow is also a valid direction so what happens in the bhagavad gita sometimes is if we have not read the mahabharat then the reasons for this are articulated Mm. reasons for this are articulated the reasons for this are not articulated here they are assumed to be known by the readers because the gita is a part of a bigger book and we discussed how atrocious and uh, adamant and arrogant the kauravas were and how they were not ready to sit for a settle for any peaceful uh, compromise at all so there are circumstantial reasons also for uh, fighting which are not mentioned over here but they are very much a part of the discussion uh, are they are part of the deliberation that is going on in arjuna's mind even if they are not discussed over here the reasons for fighting are given here and the reasons for not fighting are given within the gita because he has come in the middle of the battlefield that's when he sees the gravity the uh reality the irreversibility the immediacy of what is going to happen and that's what it sinks into him is aware of it but it just sinks into him and we will talk about this in 2.8 when we discuss that also that what is arjuna's situation at this stage so i'll try to sum- summarize quickly so we had discussed mainly three texts today so from this is arjuna's counter arguments so arjuna defends himself basically first he says that this is not an emotional issue it's a ethical issue and it's a, he's taking the discussion deeper and he's saying that that would you be able to would you be able to kill your relatives kill your shoot arrows at your elders it's not as simple as that because uh, so then he says that he, he gives his preference is he so he, he knows his options are so terrible that kingdom you could say blood stained kingdom or begging those are his options and he says i am ready to even choose this that's what he says in the next text let's continue on his discussion and then finally he says he, he basically says he's in decide and his expresses the indecisiveness that i don't know what is because it's not just a my decision it's a collective decision 
so conquering is bad but being conquered by them is also bad and it's not just for me it's for my own family it's for everyone so i just don't know which is better so that's where he stops now we'll see what he says further in the next text thank you